Have you wanted to do a bioactive setup? Well, I have too for the past while. I've made many mistakes. But today, I'm going to show you a few things I've tried out. What has been kind of good, what hasn't been that great. And just give you a real simple template that just about anyone can do. It, down below, I should have a link to my Amazon. It's going to have a whole pile of things that you can order. And that will help support the channel a bit and cost no more to you. If you buy anything off Amazon, you can click one of those links, buy anything, and that helps support me too. Most of the stuff that I use came from the dollar store. Let's go into this journey of bioactivity. You've probably all seen the typical crested gecko homes. I put a large layer of these clay balls and then some soil. Very simple. Plants haven't really done the greatest in here. The animals, like the isopods, Got dairy cows, you can... Hmm. Ooh, I guess they're under here too. I don't want to hurt them. See? Whoa, dairy cow. What? Amazing. That was basically my first go at it. Then I did uh, something kind of like this. This one doesn't have the clay bottom. It just kind of has soil, plants and stuff. And the plants... Did better in this one. We got some dairy cows here too. Really the problem with this one is that the soil just kind of got a bit like swampy. Then I've tried kind of things like this and this has been pretty good. These have been working pretty good for me. So I've been growing these white dwarf scabers and a fun little fact you can take a uh, snake sheds and that's good for them and magnolia leaves and then i got another one with yep there we go we got the dairy cows running away <laughs> this has my green keeled lizard and on top of this bin i put a mesh so i have a uv light shining through there into here now where is the little guy oh there he is <laughs> Okay, come on. It's okay. It's okay. Amazing lizards. As, as time has gone by, I've been fascinated by the whole kind of doing bioactive stuff. Right now I'm just trying to do kind of like isopod homes, kind of little mini bioactive homes for uh, my crested geckos to grow in and then this guy also is th he's he's basically the first reptile that I have on like a full bioactive home with UV and everything and sh she she's actually doing very well share with you the kind of basics the beginnings so that you can have a baseline something to start with that will succeed because if, uh, if you start with anything and it just doesn't work out for you, it's easy to give up. And I just I kept kind of trying different things, complicating it, simplifying it. And we got a system now that works really nicely. So come on, let's, let's get to it. We need a bin to start off with. A bin, Coco Choir. I like it buying it in blocks because it just, it expands and you get so much more of it. Just from a block like this, it gets really big. And use a knife to kind of, um, Separate. If you actually know a brand of this that you like, let me know. I'm gonna try and find you something good on Amazon. But I always like to know people's favorite products because this product is by a company called All Things Reptile. And I don't like it. So the lock that I bought before, it just, it all turned into very nice cocoa choir. And this one is very hairy. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't really make a difference, just personal preference. I like them to be less hairy. I'm hairy enough, I don't need my coco choir to be hairy. You're like, what do you mean you're hairy? You have no hair. Yeah, I have barely any hair on my arms. When I take off my shirt, it's like a gorilla. The best bioactive video ever. We're gonna have so much fun. Gonna add some water to this. When you wet the coco choir, it expands. You don't want it to be too liquidy. You want it to be like a nice, like a beautiful mud. See, I just want to open it up so that I can get all the dry stuff, get it started now, so that when we come back, we are ready. Did you guys used to watch Art Attack as a child? Like 20 minutes later, it should look something like this. 
So you see the top is already kind of dry and then the bottom is wet so we can use some more water. This stuff's so great, it just absorbs so much water. This is my favorite substrate for leopard gecko hides, like for the moist hide. And I'm slowly going to be diving into doing bioactive leopard gecko homes, but making arid environments. So that's even more tricky, at least for me. Yeah, very nice. We're going to let that sit. So I got these, uh, these containers at the dollar store. Dollarama had them. If you're looking for these balls, I look at the plant store because if you go get these from the reptile store, they'll charge you up the bum bum. Ikea. The two of them cost me like 10 bucks, not even. And then I got potting mix from the dollar store. Uh, if you go to plant stores to get your potting mix and stuff, you got to be careful because there's all sorts of crap in them. So you want to check out the ingredients. The ingredients inside this hummus, peat moss, sand, and perlite. So nothing in there that's going to hurt the animals or whatever. I've even like bought it from stores. They've told me, oh, this is like organic, whatever, but then it has little plant food pellets in it. And we do not want that. I'm going to show you a tool that I found. I love this. I love this tool. I think that there's three tools that every reptile keeper should have to build their own things. And this is one of them. I'll make a video about that. This is like a, a wireless Dremel. It has like these little tips and stuff you can put on. I used to melt my plastic holes all the time. I drill holes and I just, sometimes you crack the plastic. See, you can bump up the speed. I love this. Look at that. So it comes with a little thing full of like all sorts of different tips and stuff. It's doing this with like the tiniest, it's like a little piece of sandpaper. This is a fiberglass screen I got from Home Depot. See, good, keep pulling it away. Yeah, pulling it away. Good girl. My bones are getting tired of moving everything. Oh, your bones are getting tired? Yeah, uh, like Pa, uh, like, like doing a Kamasa, holding this thing. It's like my bones are tired of doing all this stuff. Oh, it's too much work for little you? Yeah. You should just be allowed to play all day? Yeah. You, you shouldn't have to help Daddy? No, because I have to do so much work and you have to do only a tiny work. You have to do so much work and I have to do tiny work? Yeah. Oh, you're full of nonsense. When did you ever have to clean any animal poo? Hmm? Have I ever made you clean animal poo? No, but I have to do a, look, I have, I have to do a snack spool, uh, do a commercial, and, and, and hold this, actually. It's so much work. <laughs> I make her actually, for, for some of my, for the baby snakes, she takes all the balls out of the home and stacks them. Okay. Put that in the snake room behind the door in the corner, okay? Yes. Good girl. I love using this tape. It's like plumbing tape or something, but I find it works very well. Cutting two little windows for my windows. Yeah! To make sure that I get the tape the right size, I'll measure it to the uh, to the side, and I'll just hit it with my nail, and then I'll measure the other side, and hit it with my nail. And cut it to where I nipped it with my nail, and then I'll cut the tape in two. So as you can see, I put the tape half on the mesh, and then half on the bin. And by taping it on the inside, you're not allowing anything to like get into any crevices. Half on the mesh, and then half on the inside of the home. If I would have made the mesh too small, like I was going to, like this, it w the, the tape wouldn't be able to hold it well. Later on, I want to actually like do this with the glue and 3D prints. So I want to make like a 3D printed like neon frame and then basically glue the mesh to the neon frame and then it'll kind of look cool. Like I'll have these little neon windows. I really like the idea of making kind of like 
You know, natural is cool, but I also like kind of artificial. Neon trees and stuff like that. Like having branches made out of like neon plastic and having fun with that kind of stuff. And take those, put those all in the garbage and then the floor we cut a pile of pieces too. So find those. What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! Yep, yeah, that's perfect. And then. And then did you get all the stuff off the floor? Oh, look, Daddy. Okay, go, go. Careful, careful with the camera, please. Oh, yes. By setting it up nicely like this, by doing all the tape on the inside, you're gonna, bugs can't creep out. Whereas if you were to do the tape like this, then bugs can crawl, get out, and stuff like that. If you drill holes and make holes, sometimes what happens is fruit flies, mosquitoes, whatever, bugs from the outside can get in easier. So what I find works the best is doing two decent sized windows. And this also allows for the air to flow. You want the air to be able to flow through the home. And we, we're doing a little compromise. So I found out the balls are not insanely necessary, but I do like them and I feel like the uh, environment performs better with them. Last time I think, I put more than I needed to, and this is just a little home. Spread them out and see if you make them flat. We need a bit more. Very nice. Very good. Thank you. That's good. So now instead of doing such a huge layer, like last time, I did like three or four times this. So you don't need, or at least I don't believe you need a huge layer. I think that just having a nice little, almost singular layer will be enough. And then we're going to take our mesh. So bugs don't crawl out. Uh, not to, well. This is so that the, so that all the dirt doesn't go into everywhere. Last time I did this, I, I like I worked so hard at making it perfect, and it really didn't make that much of a difference. So. <laughs> this time I'm just doing it kind of loosely and it'll be fine. When the animal containers go in these little containers that you make, then then all these black strings will be flat. And these are going to be four. These are going to be little animal containers that we grow the baby crested geckos and stuff in. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cute? Don't worry. Cocoa choir that's been all soaked up. And I like to do kind of a layer of the cocoa choir. Wow, it's so nice and can I flatten it? Mm, out? It's too messy, Avery. Oh, Daddy. Daddy's gonna do it quickly. Because you want to do it in time before before Ariel comes. Before mommy comes? Yeah. <laughs> because because mommy's gonna say, you have a big mess to clean up, Daddy. Uh. <laughs> is that what she's gonna say? Yes, because this is gonna be a huge mess. And mommy's gonna say, clean this mess up. Has gonna be really angry at you. Really? So you have to clean up before mom comes home. What else? Has the old duck, ducky stuff. Big troll? Yes. Big troll. And then I'll tell mommy what you are doing with these boxes. Oh boy, I'll be in big trouble. And then mommy's gonna give me a big hug. And after we eat, I get some dessert. Okay, then we got our, our soil. Uh, another ingredient that I'd like to have is kind of beech wood, and I, I wasn't able to find any that I could order. At this point, I'll just I'll add some other things. I'll add some pieces of wood, like, and since I don't have beech wood, I'm using uh, like a cypress mulch. I kind of like to have that as the top layer over top of the soil because it's a little bit thicker. And with the, you can mix it all up. But what I find is having the mulch on top of the soil discourages your geckos from actually eating the soil because they don't seem to eat the mulch. But if you just have them on soil, I I've lost baby geckos to them eating soil. The two plants 
that I recommend the most are Z plants or sh plants, which are these. They're pretty hardy. They're known as sh Z plants. And pothos, you can, you can do pothos and not have anything go wrong. You can add wood and I like to throw in a snake skin every now and then because snake skins can be eaten by isopods. When I'm walking around, I look for stones like these, like limestone. Because uh, limestone has like good minerals and stuff that bugs can take from. What's going to happen is the gecko will poo, the isopods eat the poo, the isopods poo, and that feeds the plants, and then the plants give oxygen to everything. Going from this and getting your isopods and everything to do well can still be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to actually take my swampy home. Inside this swampy home, the bugs and everything are doing well, so I have, I have a good amount of bugs. I'm going to transfer these bugs and this soil from here because I know that this soil is good. It just got too wet and it didn't have a nice environment for everything to grow. But see, you can add like wood and stuff. Yeah, add wood. You can put wood across like that and then give the animals things to crawl and climb on. I'm going to start a fresh environment inside the old swampy one and we're going to do it this time putting a bottom on it and then that's the other fun thing because you like now this this one home that went a little wrong we're going to put it into here we're going to have two fresh homes and you can add stuff like cork bark too cork bark is excellent when we want to put a plant in we go all the way to the our little bottom layer and we put in our plant and after we can add, we can add more soil. I'm actually taking now stuff from the other home and putting it into this one. If you're starting fresh, it's going to take a while for all your bugs and isopods and whatever to get started. So what I would suggest doing that first before putting the animal in, kind of developing one of these environments and then from there adding the, adding the bugs after. Also, you want to be careful with your plants. Uh, like I, I like push, kind of making them go to in point, kind of in to the um, inside instead of towards the edges where animals could probably climb up and creep out. I'm going to show you another fun little trick. If you want to be able to make like unlimited plants and just be able to propagate, look at the roots on those. This plant. Those are some nice roots. This plant is fine. I wouldn't usually do this. But I want to show you how to propagate. So all you have to do is you just look at the plant. There's like a nub. There's these different nubs. So we're going to cut in between the nub. Woo! And this I'm going to replant and continue. But now I'm going to take this piece of plant that's doing great. And then I take it and I put it inside a little water thing like this. So at the dollar store, change the water like once a week. What happens is they start growing these roots. And now this has fresh roots and I can plant it so now I'm going to use this inside some of the homes. But I had this one chopped and it grew those roots and I had this one chopped and it grew those roots too. So you see this freshly chopped, no roots. These ones, a couple months ago they got these roots and they grow and all you have to do is take this, put it into water like that. And within a month, you'll have something like that. Even this one I chopped off over here to grow another one. As your plants continue to grow, you can continue to chop the ends off, create more, and have never-ending pothos. I would recommend starting off with pothos. They're very hard to kill, and they're, they're the perfect kind of plant to grow inside your enclosures, and then you can start experimenting with other plants. The other plant I mentioned before that I really like is the Z plant or the Z or the Sh plant. Tell me what plants you like to use if you know any other plants that are like pothos that are just kind of foolproof. I'll be playing around with other things eventually but I wanted to kind of give you something that I know is foolproof. The first time that you set it up it'll be kind of the hardest to kind of get everything going but once you've done it once then by taking all of that rich soil and putting it into a fresh bin that we've been making, it's going to kind of just jumpstart that whole process. It's going to make it so much easier. It's like 
we can't just grow plants out of nothing, but as soon as we have the plants, then we can grow more and grow more. So in the same way, the bugs, they're pretty easy to keep going once you get them started. By growing these plants and bugs on their own and getting like the setup really nice on its own the first time, every time after that, it's gonna be better. I thought I was just gonna do a couple setups, but then I redid, I redid a pile of the others. Now I'm gonna give it a nice little spray down. These things, if you get a sprayer, you wanna get a sprayer. I've, I got this thing at the dollar store, so that was pretty good too. I'm gonna to have links for everything down below. They're not gonna be individual links. It's gonna take you to my Amazon store, and I'll have a category like reptile stuff. Or kind of spray it down. I like to spray the walls, because the walls is where like the geckos will lick and eat from. It's really like spraying it down, you probably can't spray it too much. If you uh, dump water in or whatever, then yeah, it could be easy to kind of give it too much water. By, but if you give it all a nice little spray down, it's not going to cause any problems. Uh, some people like to have a side that is a little bit less wet. So same thing, I put the pothos on the wet side. And then if you do the Z plants, you don't want them to be on the wet side because they don't need as much water. So plants that need more water, you put on the wetter side. Plants that need less water, put them on the other side. If it gets too wet, it's not good. You want it to be able to kind of dry out. But then if it stays dry for too long, everything will just die. So you don't want that either. So you can throw in a snake shed. The uh, bugs end up eating it, so that works too. Uh, magnolia leaves. They like magnolia leaves. Yeah, do, the, do this first on its own in, in a bin or a container. Do one and get that developed and then once it's developed you'll have that good soil. Like in here there was way too much like just black soil and it was all like covered in isopods and everything. So from this one that had too much I was able to spread it and make now. Now we have like so many more. You can do something like this. So I have the soil in here and I haven't really put much in here because I'm actually going to take this and dump it and put it into a bigger bioactive home that I'm working on for Avery's room. And you don't want to just fill the home full of stuff like this where like if you screw up it's it's done. You can set it all up in here. I could take this, stick it in a big home and then kind of develop an environment inside the tray. Uh, you could also do this if you have a wooden enclosure if you don't want to like you know if you don't want to water treat every like it should be water treated anyways but you know what I mean you stick this inside the enclosure mess around with it or get a tray like this you could cut it down stick it inside your leopard gecko enclosure and set up an area that's more bioactive that's I'm experimenting with all these things and this is simple and I know that it can work for you and that's why I wanted to share it with you Are you still there yeah, you're hiding. <laughs> okay. So I took some of that rich soil and I added it here because this uh, this enclosure, uh, like it, it was almost, it, it didn't have enough life. That's the other thing. It's like you can have them set up where they just, they, it's too rich and there's like too much life in it. And then you could have the other extreme where there's not enough. You can go outside, you can get pieces of wood, you can get cork, you can get some at the, uh, reptile shop, but you can also get some just outside and you're not going to cause much harm or problems. Doing a little something like this, it just makes it more fun for the animals. It's just I'm going to try growing baby crested geckos in here this year and I've had before crested geckos eating the dirt, so that's why I really like the mulch on top. Another reason to like really focus spraying on the walls of the enclosure and then the wet side a little bit but you don't want to really create puddles if you create puddles of water what's going to end up happening is the gecko might stick his face in the puddle and try to drink like that and then you could end up losing your animal so you don't want that to happen i hope you guys found that helpful i, re I want to help you guys out with that it's something i've had a long time trying to figure out if you have any tips or tricks that you'd like to share with me or other videos that cover this well uh, let me know send them down in the comments below if you want to support me I'm setting up a patreon one more thing I forgot I like to actually sprink some sprink <laughs> I like to sprinkle a little bit of activated carbon into everything too I find that yeah activated carbon is good it just kind of 
I don't know, filters, cleans things a little. I actually would have mixed this into the substrate, but I forgot to I'll just sprinkle a little bit. ASMR doesn't include you talking, it just is the sound of the real thing. Oh. No, ASMR is anybody that like makes noises. People like they rub things and they're like Yes, they're natural sounds. They're not you talking. No, they talk, they whisper. They're like, we're gonna do a we're gonna have a special experience. It would be so special if you smash that like button. In the comments below, can you talk for ASMR? Is this ASMR? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments below. And feel free to ask a question in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it in the next video perhaps. If you want to see more videos than most next in container and being more building for container with with more growing babies, then smash that like button. I didn't tell her to say all that. She's got a mind of her own now, okay? I gotta stop looking at the screen. I gotta like hide the screen so I stop looking at it. Okay, love you all. Ariel's gonna come home and scream at me. Oh, it's not funny. See you in the next one.